Today, we're going to rank a bunch of countries based on my personal opinion on how good it is to do a PhD in said country. And the criteria are going to be basically salary and the likelihood of uh, being abused and how good the working conditions are. And it's all based on my personal opinion. So it's going to be 100% correct and objective. Okay, so let's start with America. America first. So in Scandinavia, I feel like the US have a very bad reputation. Uh, mostly because people think you're gonna be there's a you're gonna be abused, you're gonna be pressured to work overtime, you're gonna make little money, and all of those criticisms are correct. But there are also a bunch of countries that are worse. So I am actually gonna put the US in B tier. There we go. Eh, a little crooked. In B tier. So now we have a reference. Let's continue with Australia. Australia is. I think the working culture is probably pretty similar to the US. This is my guess. But I think the salaries are actually lower. And it's also a very high cost of living country. So I think Australia is worse than the US. So we're going to put those in that in two C tier. That's right. Australian C tier. Okay, so now we get to Austria. So Austria. German-speaking country, have, have the Alps, so it's uh, nice and mountainous, nice nature. I also think you get paid an acceptable amount. It's, uh, it's a decent salary, and uh, I think the working condition, based on my conjecture, I would say the working conditions are probably okay. So I'm going to put Austria in 2A tier. Austria goes into A tier. A little crooked there. Whatever. Okay. So let's continue with Belgium. Um, they have beer and chocolate and diamonds. So that's pretty good. I think the pay is okay. Now, I don't know if there's a difference between Wallonia and Flanders. So those who don't know, Belgium is basically divided in two. Where... You have a French-speaking part called Valonia and a Dutch-speaking part, or Flemish, which is a variation of Dutch, in the north. Um, and I don't know if there's a difference, so I'm just going to assume it's all the same, which might I, I think might be incorrect, but whatever. I'm going to put Belgium in A tier. I think it's okay to do a PhD in Belgium. Okay, so now we get to Canada. So... Canada is like the US, only you get paid less. So if you have a choice between the US and Canada, find a better option. But if you are American and you don't want to move outside of North America, you should probably stay in the US. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Canada goes into C tier. Okay, now to uh, the country I live in right now. So Denmark. Denmark has probably the highest PhD salary uh, if you factor in cost of living. Like, you make decent amount of money, working conditions are excellent, doesn't get better. Uh, I think the likelihood of abuse is probably the lowest in Denmark. Still happens, definitely not guaranteed that you won't experience abuse in Denmark, but as far as work culture goes, I think Denmark is number one. So Denmark goes into S tier, no question. So there's Denmark. So let's continue with another Nordic country, which is Finland. So. If you've ever been to uh, Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and you thought to yourself, hmm, people here are quite uh, socially awkward and uh, quiet, Finland takes that to another level. So 
for that reason alone, it should probably go into S tier. Also good working conditions, I imagine, and uh, an acceptable salary. So I think Finland also goes into S tier. So you can see a trend is emerging, Nordic country bias. Okay, let's continue with France. So France is, from what I gather, okay. Like culture is okay. Salary, you don't get paid a lot, but you get paid some. Uh, and I think it's, I think the salary is pretty comparable to the US, maybe a little less, but cost of living is lower. Uh, I think working conditions are okay. So I'm gonna put France into B tier. Oh, fuck. Okay, so I think, so I think working conditions are okay, and uh, I think also salary is okay. Um, of course, you will have to. I don't know what language they speak. If you have to speak French to do a PhD in France, um, so that might be a concern. But if you speak French, I guess it's fine. You have to deal with French people, though, obviously. So it goes into B tier. So there, France in B tier. Okay, so what's next? Deutschland. Germany. Germany is... Uh, has good salaries. Has an okay salary. Pretty good. Um, I think working conditions are pretty good. Okay. I don't think working conditions are as good as in the Nordic countries. I think the risk of being abused is definitely higher. And salaries are not as high as in the Nordic countries. So I'm going to stick Germany into A tier. It's, uh, so Germany and Austria are pretty similar, I'd say. Like Austria is mini Germany, basically. So makes sense that they go in the same tier. Okay. Greece. I was a little unsure if I should include Greece because... It's kind of Eastern Europe also, but in my mind, it's mostly, it's Southern Europe. So, I do include it. Uh, and uh, from what I gather, Greece has the lowest salaries. And I think the likelihood of abuse is pretty high. And the working environment is not great. So, I'm going to put Greece into F tier. Probably, so Greece is the worst so far. Okay, so then Ireland. So then we go to Iceland. So Iceland gets... So Iceland... So Iceland is a very expensive country. So yeah, the salary isn't great relative to the cost of living, but I think working conditions are going to be very good. And uh, of course, Iceland is the home of Vikings. So and they have this uh, and they have a cool, they like lifting heavy things. So Iceland is a very expensive country. So it's an island in the middle of the North Sea. So Everything has to be transported there, and it's going to be expensive. All the transport to Iceland is expensive, so it's going to be expensive, but the salaries for the PhDs aren't excellent. They're okay, but not brilliant, especially relative to the cost of living. Working conditions are going to be good, and also the people of Iceland are cool, so there's an addition added bonus. They really like to lift heavy things, which is awesome. So, Iceland goes into A tier. Yes, shaping up nicely there. So then we go to Ireland. And uh, based on my research, I can see that Ireland doesn't have very high salaries. I'm actually not 100% sure what... The cost of living is in Ireland, but I guess it's fairly high. I know that a lot of American tech, tech companies have um, their headquarters there, 
or are registered in Ireland to avoid paying tax, um, which is why their GDP is so high. Um, and uh, yeah, I have the impression Ireland is a lot like the other English speaking countries in terms of culture. And so I'm going to put Ireland into C tier because the salary are less than in the US. So there you go. So here we have Italy. Italy. Where the fuck does the flag? I think it goes the green in, doesn't it? Okay, so then we have Italy. Italy is... I know some people from Italy and uh, they're cool. But... I don't think you get paid very much, and I think the likelihood of abuse is fairly high, and the working environment not great necessarily, so I'm gonna put Italy into D tier. Okay, Netherlands. So I feel like Netherlands shows up a lot. On uh, on like on the internet as a great country to do a PhD in, and uh, it's probably pretty good. I think it's pretty good. You get a decent salary. Working conditions are going to be good generally, uh, but I don't think they're as good as Denmark or uh, Finland. So I'm just going to put them in A tier. Netherlands goes in A tier. Okay. So we go to New Zealand. New Zealand is uh, apparently worse than Australia, which is surprising to me. I always view New Zealand as like one of the best countries in the world. But they don't pay their students very well. And uh, yeah, I think the working culture is probably similar to the other English-speaking countries here. So... Australia, uh, New Zealand, New Zealand also goes in C tier. Okay, so now we go get to my home country, Norway. So I've been living abroad for eleven years now, but I think now I didn't, <laughs> I would never have said this eleven years ago, but I think Norway is the best country in the world. So completely unbiased opinion right there. Um, so salary is going to be high. I think the salary is pretty much the same as in Denmark. Uh, taxes are a little lower than in Denmark. But cost of living is significantly higher, I think. So you're probably not going to have the same spending power as if you, as if you were living in Denmark uh, on a, D a Danish PhD salary. But if you're an outdoors person, outdoorsy person, you're going to definitely prefer Norway over Denmark because uh, nature is much better there. Um, but overall, I think... Uh, and Okay, and work culture is going to be very similar. So obviously Norway goes into S tier. Okay, so now we get to Spain. <laughs> Spain. I have a pretty negative impression of Spain now. So I've heard from, I know, multiple Spanish people, and from what I hear, even if you have a contract stating that you're going to be paid, that's not a guarantee. There's no guarantee you're actually going to see that money. And according to the Spanish people I know, Spanish students are fleeing Spain. There are Spanish students everywhere uh, around the world, and uh, so Spain is gonna go into F tier with Greece. So yeah, now we get to Sweden. So Sweden is like Norway, only worse. But it's still pretty good. Good working conditions, decent salary. So it goes into S tier. So, we come to Switzerland. So, Switzerland has the highest PhD salaries of any country, but cost of living is also going to be high. Now, I know multiple people who have uh, done their PhD in Switzerland, and from what I hear, it's 
very likely, or the stories I've heard have been very bad. Like, someone I know told me they were screamed at. Like, this this professor, this uh, big shot professor at the chemistry department at the ETH Zurich, would scream at his students on a regular basis. And he was also an extreme micromanager. <clears throat> I've also heard other stories, although not as bad, and so I'm gonna put Switzerland in A tier despite the salary, because if that's generally accepted, if these behaviors are generally accepted, then it's a pretty bad situation to be in if you're a PhD student. So Switzerland goes into A tier. So finally, we have the United Kingdom. So the UK has some very high-ranking universities, but they don't pay their students very well. So PhD students and postdocs are very poorly paid, especially compared to the cost of living. I guess the cost of living in London and surrounding areas are very high, and the salaries are lower than in the US. So yeah, this goes into C tier as well. So as you can see, the Commonwealth and Ireland is doing pretty poorly here, whilst the, the Nordic countries are doing quite well. Completely objective. Um, so yeah, if I'm gonna say the best country to do a PhD in, I would probably say Denmark. I'm very... Uh, you get the highest salaries and great working environment. Um, Norway is very similar, but I think the cost of living is significantly higher, and so I think Denmark clinches it, but if you prefer more, if you're an outdoors kitty, if you're an outdoor kitty, then you would probably enjoy Norway, living in Norway more than Denmark. Um, so yeah. Go to the Nordics or the German-speaking countries and probably stay away from Southern Europe. That's my advice. So that was all for this episode of Fun with Flags.